Okay. Um, I'm Patrick Flanagan. I'm from Isotex. And um, we're one of the early adopters of Scaleform for Unity. So I'm here to talk just a little bit about um, how we integrated into the game and some of the stuff that we ended up with. Um, so just to give you uh, kind of an introduction to Isotex, um, I'll tell you a little bit about who we are. Um, I'll show you some of our upcoming game, March of War. Uh, and talk a little bit about you know, why we decided to use Scaleform, some of, some of the other options that we considered, and what we ultimately ended up doing. So Isotex is a studio based in the Netherlands. Uh, we focus mostly on strategy-based war games. Um, we do uh, turn-based RTS. We even have an FPS. Um, as you can see, we try to target a wide range of audience. Um, we have you know, everything from younger players to older guys like myself. Um, so we try to have uh, something that appeals to everybody. Um, we kind of got our start working on Command and Conquer mods, and then we uh, slowly you know, branched out, started working on our own games. Um, and that's how we ended up doing this. So our most recent game, if you might have heard of, it's called uh, Iron Grip Marauders. Um, it recently won uh, the 2012 uh, Dutch Best Online Game Award. Um, it was one of the first free-to-play games that launched on Steam when they started doing that back in 2011. Um, and the way Marauders worked, it kind of had a split personality. It was like a, an online browser-based strategy game. And so we had uh, half of it was a, a website that you go log into where you, you know, research upgrades and manage your armies and that kind of thing. And then when you actually play a 3D battle, um, it'll launch uh, a Unity web player where you play out the actual battle that happens. Um, so at the time, you know, Scaleform for Unity didn't exist, so we ended up doing all of our own UI uh, using Easy GUI, which is kind of hit and miss. Um, you know, it takes up a lot of programmer time. And, uh, but anyway, to give you kind of a better idea of how Marauders works, I'll, I'm going to show a quick video for that, um, and then that'll give you an idea of what we, were what we were building off of when we started using Scaleform. So as you saw, there was kind of like the, the 2D UI and then the 3D game. But it was kind of like a jarring transition to be on this website for a while. And then you go back and forth to 3D and then back to the website. Um, so one of the goals for the new game is we wanted to integrate all of that together. So you just you run the game and you do everything from inside the game. You don't have to switch back and forth. Um, we also had uh, a lot of really cool art. We have some good artists. But you know the, the easy GUI that we put together, um, it wasn't really I don't know, it didn't really show off the art that they had built. So we wanted to have much better production values. We wanted our UI to look really cool. Um, and this time around, we wanted to work on all the different platforms, including mobile. So last time, the game was just PC and Mac. Uh, this time around, we wanted to do iOS and Android also. So as much as possible, we wanted to have the common code base so we wouldn't have to maintain you know, different branches for each platform, that kind of stuff. So we started working on this back in January of 2012. Um, that was still before Scaleform came out, so we were kind of building off what we, did, what we did with Marauders. We had you know, a website and then a, the 3D game again. And then in July, uh, Scaleform came out. So originally when we were looking at it, we wanted to do just the HUD in Scaleform. So you'd see like, the buttons and the menus and you know, pop-ups and that kind of stuff. Um, so we started doing that. It ended up working out pretty well. And then as we, as we kept doing it, you know, our artists and programmers became more familiar with it. And then we said, well, you know, does it really make sense to have this website? You know, maybe we can just do everything in scale form. Um, so that's kind of what we ended up doing. We have uh, you know, a lot of the screens that you saw that were web pages before are now re-implemented um, using scale form inside of the game. Um, so some of the, the main reasons that we chose to use scale form, uh, you know, with easy GUI, 
Uh, one of the problems was, you know, it had a, a programmer that had to do pretty much everything. Um, but this time, you know, the artists and the people that aren't necessarily programmers can set up, you know, action script to move HUD elements around, and they can kind of implement some of the HUD themselves. Um, it was a lot easier for us to find people too, because you know, there's a huge audience of people that already know Flash. They have a big user base already, um, so it's kind of a, you know, it's much easier to to find people. And then it was sort of a natural fit for us because you know we're kind of a remote studio and not everybody's in the same location. So when the artists were designing the HUD, they would kind of they would build a mock-up or a prototype in Flash to demonstrate how they wanted it to work, and then they would send that to us, and then a programmer would implement it. So it kind of you know it was a natural fit to just take that Flash movie and put it right in the game instead of then converting that to to a different library. Um, and using Scaleform lets us put you know all that same code uh, on every platform. So when we started out, we were going to convert the, the web pages uh, to this. And our web pages, you know, the, our, our web team was very uh, used to building these responsive, dynamic web pages. We had, uh, you know, they were using AJAX and jQuery. Um, so we wanted to maintain that same responsiveness and feel with the, with the site or with the Scaleform version. And, uh, you know, there's about 50 screens. So we wanted a way that uh, it could be very modular so that people can work on the same stuff. And, it, you know, you're not overwriting flash files or, uh, you know, merge conflicts or that kind of stuff. Um, so what we ended up going with is um, we have sort of a, a core flash file that manages all the different uh, sections. Like, so for page loads, you know, it might be like a game lobby or a, an, an army screen where you see all your units, that kind of thing. Um, so we have one flash file that kind of manages all that. And then we have like mini pagelets, we call it, that get loaded. And so, you know, pagelets are sort of standalone things that one guy can work on at a time, and then we integrate them all on the screen at once. Um, so each, each pagelet, you know, can, uh, uh, through ActionScript, it can call, uh, you know, call the game to get its own data. It can call web services. It can, it can do pretty much anything that we need to do. Um, and it's sort of a self-contained flash chunk that, you know, different members of the team can work on. Um, another main thing that we got out of this, uh, we decided to use Click, which is a, it's a UI uh, library that ships with Scaleform. And it has, you know, buttons and drop downs and all that kind of thing. And, uh, but one of the main advantages of that is that it, it helps you uh, set up a resolution independent system. So if you want to do something like, uh, you know, mobile or retina or different size screens on Android, it's, uh, you know, it makes it a lot easier. You don't have to hard code it for a bunch of different resolutions or anything like that. So here's an example of uh, like something you can throw together with Click. This is, this is the programmer art version, so it looks pretty basic. But you, know, you can put together a screen like this in you know, 20 minutes or something, and then you can kind of test it all out, hook it up, and then the artist can go back later and you know, put in the real art. They can make it look fancy, all that kind of stuff. Um, so here's another example of uh, this is one of the screens from our website, now implemented in, in uh, scale form. This is the, the programmer art version again. It's got like the placeholder unit portraits and icons and stuff. And so the programmers can go in and you know, set it all up and hook up the buttons, make sure everything works. And then after it works, then the artist can come back and, and put in the real art and sort of skin it, so to speak. Um, and that can happen independently. So this is kind of the same screen now with the art, after the artists go through, it's, uh, you know, it's got the real icons and the correctly sized portraits and all that stuff. Um, so here's uh, another screenshot from our game. We have sort of a, a world map area where different players and factions can uh, you know, fight for control of a territory. And so the world map we can implement you know, using our 3D engine, and then we can use Flash for the, the buttons and the pop-ups about units and uh, you know, battle statuses and stuff kind of in the middle there. Um, so it's sort of like overlaid, and you can use it as a HUD or as the complete presentation part like we were doing with the, um, with the army editor. So this is, a, this is another screenshot from our game. We have, this is the HUD using Flash. Um, and then again, the 3D game in the background. And um, so one of the things that's nice about this is when the, when the artists are setting up the, the HUD and they want it to look like this, they can implement you know, all the, the stuff for pressing the cards and pressing the different buttons and deploying units and everything. Um, you know, most of that can be in Flash. And then they just send the game, you know, 
the, the user clicked on this unit or deploy this unit or that kind of thing. And so it makes it uh, a lot easier for the programmers. We don't have to have programmers hook up every button and you know, every, every single UI element. And so uh, it offloads a lot of work to the artists, which they really like too, because they can iterate a lot faster on that. So this is an example of one of the flash files that we have. Um, this is like a targeting reticle. And so you have, um, basically, it's a crosshair. And then these little pluses over here indicate um, like how effective an attack will be. Uh, the, there's some status bars and stuff up there. So you can kind of lay out all the, the layers and elements in this flash file. And then through ActionScript, you can control you know, what's visible and what's not, and what gets colored a certain way or has a glow or different things like that. So then when you put it in the game, this is, uh, this is with nothing selected, sort of all the units are standing around. And then when you click on a unit, you get this ring, and you'll get like the little uh, gear cog things over a unit. And that's, that shows uh, you know, which units are in range that can be attacked. And all that stuff is implemented with Flash. So the game just says, uh, you know, here are the units in range. And then Flash can put the icons where they need to go. And uh, if you click on one, it'll, it'll just send back to the game. You, know, you, you clicked on this unit, attack that unit, that kind of thing. Um, and then it's also interactive. So uh, with certain attacks, like in our game, we have area attacks where it can hit the ground and target a, you know, a lot of units in a certain range. Um, so this is what this is showing. The, the, the target things have turned red, which means uh, if you use this attack, all those units will be hit. And so again, that's all managed through action script. You know, the, the game can just say, uh, you know, here's where you're going to attack, here's the range, and the and action script can figure out, you know, like, oh, these are the units that you have to to do something with, and what color you do, where you where you position it, all that kind of thing. And then when you actually do the attack, then Flash cleans it up, uh, all the cursors go away, and only the fiery remnants of the units are left. <laughs> So, so how do we actually implement this in the game? Um, so Scaleform for Unity comes with a native plugin um, for Mac, PC, and mobile. Um, Autodesk gives you the source code for the C Sharp plugin, which is all you need to integrate it in Unity. Um, if you also want the source code, they, they do licensing for that too. Um, and the way they set it up is they, they recommend that you have uh, you know, mostly Flash as the presentation layer. And so you put uh, you know, your heavy lifting, so to speak. You'll put that code in C Sharp or um, you know, something native. You won't necessarily do a lot of uh, crazy action script logic. Um, we had a few differences with that. Um, I, I talked a little bit about earlier how it was a lot easier to find Flash programmers um, since it has a big user base. And then we have, uh, you know, we have separate teams doing the, the art for the HUD and the implementation of the game. And so it made a little bit more sense to let them do some action script. Um, so we have a little bit, but it's, uh, it's not performance intensive. It's mostly for UI elements, you know, what to hide, what to show, uh, how to color stuff, that kind of thing. Um, there's uh, one, one limitation we ran into. Uh, by default, the, uh, there's a, a limit of 10 calls back and forth between C Sharp and action script per frame. Um, but it's easy to change. You can just, uh, you know, it's in the C Sharp code. You don't have to license the plugin for that. Um, so we ended up, uh, although we ended up combining those anyway, we started out with, uh, you know, we'd make a call for set this HUD text, set this HUD color. So we ended up with a lot of calls, and then we profiled it, and it turned out that was kind of slow. So we sort of combined it, and we have one, you know, huge call that passes a big data structure, and from that, Flash knows, you know, you can, it basically does everything for one frame instead of all the little calls again. So there are a couple things that we implemented to make it easier to integrate into our game. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the things that the Scaleform API gives you is you can call C Sharp from ActionScript and vice versa. Um, but the data types that you pass are you know, strings and floats and ints and kind of bit like basic uh, types. But we wanted to pass like some crazy objects back and forth. You know, we have a lot of web services that return structures of dictionaries and lists and all this kind of stuff. And we wanted to be able to send that back and forth to ActionScript, too. Um, second, some of the, the ActionScript can trigger web service calls directly. Like, um, I don't know if you saw on one of the menus, we have a, a chat system, which is implemented in Flash. And so you know, when you type a, a text chat and you press send, 
uh, you know, it calls a web service to send that to the server so everybody else sees it too. Um, so we sort of have a generic system that you can uh, trigger web service calls from ActionScript also. Um, and lastly, we, we use WebSync from Frozen Mountain uh, for networking, like our PVP multiplayer and our chat system. It's sort of a, an asynchronous uh, HTTP-based uh, event system. And so we wanted a way for, for ActionScript to be able to receive WebSync events uh, directly so it could you know, pop up chat notifications or achievements or that kind of stuff too. So, uh, like I mentioned, we w first of all, we wanted to be able to convert data types to, uh, to our custom, you know, uh, more detailed objects. Um, and we wanted to use an automated approach so we didn't have to custom code, you know, each different web service call or each different event type. Um, so we ended up implementing something that's uh, it's sort of a custom converter. It uses reflection. It's, uh, it's sort of like a JSON or XML serializer might work. Um, so... For example, here are some C-sharp classes in our game. We have uh, mission and detailed mission. And it's basically just, uh, you know, these are structures that might be used by the game to show, uh, you know, show what's going on or get you into a game. Uh, they're usually returned from a web service. And, but we want to be able to take these and pass them directly to, to ActionScript so that we can use them in Flash, too. So what we have... Um, this is sort of our custom uh, conversion function. So basically, this will take a, a C-sharp object. And using reflection, it goes through all the different properties. And, um, and it basically reconstructs that same object in ActionScript. And so uh, the, like this set member, that's a scale form API. And so basically, all the different names of properties in C-sharp will have the, the corresponding name in ActionScript. And then we have another tool that basically it uh, it will auto-generate based on the C-sharp. It'll generate the, uh, the action script equivalent of these classes. And then we can convert them using this function. So after we run it through our converter, then we get this on the action script side. This is the, the action script equivalent of our C-sharp class. And so then we can pass back and forth. And um, you know, when, we get the, when we get a mission back from our web service, we can just run it through that function and pass it directly to Flash. We don't have to do a lot of custom translation or anything. And then here's the same thing, um, the detailed mission class also converted into ActionScript now. Um, so one of the other things that we ran into is that, you know, now that we have these custom, uh, you know, objects that, we, that we're converting, we needed a way to represent null because, you know, sometimes you just don't have an object there. Uh, but Scaleform didn't have a, a built-in null value, so to speak. Um, so we, ca we came up with something kind of cool for it. Um, it's a little bit of a hack, but it definitely works. Um, I'll show you how that works. But basically, we take advantage of the fact that in ActionScript, um, you can, if you create an array uh, with more than you know, one, or one or more elements in it, uh, by default, all of the values are initialized to ActionScript's undefined, which is kind of the equivalent of null. And so basically, what we do is uh, to get a null value, uh, we call ActionScript to make a new array, and then we just return the first element. And that's our null. <laughs> um, so we also have the, uh, the C-sharp web services that we call from ActionScript. Um, you know, we have the pagelet system that I kind of talked about before. And they can trigger uh, web service calls to get data or send chats or that kind of thing. Um, so we, w we, we needed a, a way to, uh, to do that in a generic way. Um, so it's the same kind of thing. We have, uh, we have um, classes that automatically generate code. And uh, you can go from ActionScript back to C-sharp in a similar way that we did the, the C-sharp to ActionScript. So like here's an example of our uh, chat message class. So this is something that would be in ActionScript that we then want to pass to, to C-sharp to send to the server or display somehow. So what we end up doing here is this is the, the same kind of function um, going backwards again. Uh, but this time, we're going from ActionScript back to C Sharp. And that way, we can pass you know, w whatever custom objects we have going back and forth. And using reflection, it's sort of automatically generated, so we don't have to uh, you know, write a bunch of custom code for each different implementation that we have. Um, and then our tool you know, automatically goes uh, and generates the C Sharp class 
that represents that as well. And then, so we pass data back and forth. Um, we, you can also call uh, flash functions from ActionScript, or sorry, flash functions from C Sharp. So this is an example of kind of our, our wrapper function for this. Um, and you can pass you know, whatever arguments you want. And it basically just packs all that up and sends it to ActionScript. So you can pass um, you know, complex structures if you have a lot of data to pass. Or if you just have one or two things, you can you know, pass whatever parameters you want. And they just, they just get passed along to the Flash as well. So one of the main things that we ran into is um, you know, performance is important for us. So we wanted to make sure things uh, you know, still ran well. Scaleform comes with a Flash profiler, so you can kind of profile and see what's going on. And it works on all the platforms, so it's really nice. You can get a, a good idea of where your code is going slow or you know, what's, what's going wrong. Um, so when we first implemented our HUD, uh, we noticed there was a huge frame rate drop. And you know, it was like half. And we were trying to figure out you know, what's, what's going on here. So we ended up, you know, we started profiling uh, with the tools that they give us. And we discovered that this, this little cog in the HUD down here, the little circle thing, uh, you know, it turns out that Flash is, is vector-based. And this was getting converted into, you can see over there, like 21,000 triangles. <laughs> so. <laughs> So it's uh, you know it's kind of unexpected that you say, oh that little cog down there nobody noticed but that was you know half the frame rate, um, but that's the kind of thing that you know you can uh, it comes with really good profiling tools you can kind of figure out you know where you're going wrong and then sort of you know fix up your HUD based on what you've changed. <laughs> um, this is a screenshot of the profiler that that comes with the game or with uh, Scaleform. And you kind of profile uh, your scripts while they're running or while they're rendering, and you see like, uh, you know, what's, uh, you know, what's slow or what you can improve or that kind of stuff. Um, so, so now I'll show you a, a quick video of uh, some of the stuff from our new game uh, and how it compares to the original movie that I showed. Thank you. 